See in today's episode, watercolor drawing, clothing, household goods and for interior design, young illustration artists who changed the world of fashion in Ukraine and beyond. Is education a must to make a living through art and are Ukrainian roots required to be Ukrainian? See more in the new episode of Masters of Crafts. What does it mean to be Ukrainian? In different times, the answers given by sociologists have been roughly the same, only the ratio was changing. One of the latest surveys of national identity was conducted by the Razumkov Center in 2016 by request of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands and the Conrad Edentour Fund. Among the multiple numbers and graphs, one can find the answer to the ultimate question – what does it mean to be Ukrainian? 33% of the respondents consider the national identity of a person depends on their ethnic origin. This idea has dominated for all the years of the country's existence. 25% of Ukrainians responded that it depends on personal choice, that is, on self-identification. Sociologists conclude the events of the last years have significantly influenced the information of the civil identity of Ukrainians, which becomes more important than political views, religion, or even ethnicity. The heroine of today's episode of Masters of Crafts has done a lot so that the question what does it mean to be Ukrainian no longer sounds like a nationality check. In response, she decided to paint a young modern Ukraine. Those willing to learn how to paint gather for a Saturday workshop, but they're going to get something much more than just learning how to paint. It's important for me to show you how to do it, that is, how I do it, meaning I want to show you as many techniques as possible. The workshop is conducted by Lilis Sarkisyan, a Ukrainian illustration artist of American origin. She is also a publisher, a senior editor and a manager of multiple art projects. It seems as if she manages to do everything with the same ease to the point where one can fall in love with her airy, sophisticated watercolor and ink drawing. Her paintings can be found in works of famous Ukrainian fashion and interior designers. Lilis Sarkisyan admits immediately when speaking to the participants of her workshop that she is a self-taught artist. After each workshop, I understand myself more and more, why I drew it like that, where my mistakes are and how I can improve it. It's an unbelievable experience for me. I'm often asked why I need this, why teach other people, why create competitors in this area. After each workshop, I feel I'm head and shoulders above myself, that is, I'm constantly growing and doing everything better. Watch only on UATV, immense deep into the art of Lilith Sarkisyan, which goes far beyond drawings and represses the spirit of a modern multinational Ukraine. Watch next. What was Lilis Sarkisyan doing at Ukrainian Fashion Week? How has she become the first Ukrainian fashion illustrator? First half of the 1990s, young, independent Ukraine is engulfed in social unrest, poverty and hyperinflation. Right at that time, the family of Jan Lilith Sarkisyan had moved from Armenia to the provincial city of Poltava. Later, going to Ukrainian school, she found a hobby to her liking. At that time, I was going to that, I think it was called, drawing club. We sat in the basement of a great master artist named Igor Anatolievich Shepulin, but we were not learning how to draw there. We went there rather to have some tea and cookies, and we drew something in the process. He never told us what we can or cannot do, what is right, what is wrong, what to draw and what not to draw. It had been already clear that Lilith had a talent for drawing. However, it was hard to imagine a successful Ukrainian artist even in the more favorable 2000s. Therefore, Lilith chose a completely different profession for herself. We're used to thinking that artists are poor all their life, right? This is, that is, they get rich after they die, and so this thought settles in a child's subconsciousness. You understand that you can't make a living with illustrations or with some kind of art, and generally you don't even need it. You've got philology translators and languages, so go, get to work, and just do it. The Lee Sarkisyan has really touched Ukrainian culture for the first time at Tarashevchenko Kiev National University. The language and literature were easy for her, but her soul demanded something more. Since 2007, Ukrainian Fashion Week has been held every year in Kiev. This is a stage for both beginners and famous Ukrainian designers. Lilis used to draw only for herself, but still, she managed to go check out Ukrainian Fashion Week there, though not as a participant, but as an interested observer. I was hired as a hostess without a problem. A hostess meets celebrities and leads them 
their seats, welcomes them, shows them their sector and invites them to take their seats. That's it. That's all I was doing. A bit later, I started helping the designers by ironing their clothing and help them with some organizational issues. Show after show, for many hours, for the whole week, to avoid getting bored, Lelise began drawing sketches of clothing from different collections. Having worked several seasons as a hostess, she started coming to the Fashion Week as a journalist. And then the drawings from the shows had suddenly became in high demand. Editors liked the idea of posting Lelise's original work on the website instead of ordinary photos. And after that, she got her first order ever to create an invitation to a show of a collection of one of the participating designers. It was a very simple invitation. I had to draw everything with a liner, very simply, by hand. She even told me, make it in a way that no one can see that it's hand-drawn. I don't need straight lines, let the line be curved. I want it to be hand-drawn and that it looks like the drawing when it's printed. It was the first invitation made in such a manner for all the years of existence of the Fashion Week. Thus, Lilith Sarkisian had found her unique style and drawings transferred to different objects. The sense of personal touch in her works has attracted Ukrainian designers and large foreign companies and magazines, which order illustrations especially for their advertisements. The first Ukrainian fashion illustrator has become a true discovery for the entire world of fashion. See next, why does Lilith Sarkisian paint with the wrong watercolor and how did she manage to unify people of 60 different nationalities in one unique project? Trial and error is the only way to master any craft. Lily Sarkisian went through her learning in extreme conditions, when she was required not only to complete a single order, but to create several or even dozens of versions of the same drawing. A modern illustration artist is a person with a digital tablet or a PC, but Lily draws by hand, on paper, and with real paint purely out of the principle. How it's done? In her use, Lilith tried taking up to academic drawing lessons. For her, this experience ended in great disappointment. At the very first lesson, I had heard probably a dozen times my teacher saying it was wrong to do it like this, that I couldn't do that, and that I shouldn't have done this. And I had realized I didn't want it anymore. I believe there are no do's and don'ts in art. The word no does not exist in art. You can do anything you like. If you are doing it cool, if you are making something unbelievably great, then why not? Watercolor drawing techniques are considered among the hardest in art. Lelise was learning them on her own, and of course, from the point of view of academic artists, she did everything wrong. Her watercolor drawings have saturated colors and graphical contours. The merging of two techniques has appeared for a reason. If a drawing is to be transferred, say, to a sweatshirt, then it cannot be bleak and too impressionist type. At least, the pictures on the closing be shapeless spot. I work with ink and watercolor. Before starting with the watercolor, I always draw using lines. Thus, there is a graphic element in my work, and I like when there is a lot of it. I like when there are a lot of fine lines, thin, thick, different lines, turning from one type into another. My watercolor is not really watercolor, it's kind of gouache-like watercolor. I can't say how this technique is called, I think there is no name for it. Transferring a living picture into an object is the most difficult task. Few typographers in Ukraine are able to cope with the task, for the colors not to change and to preserve the intentional imperfection of the lines. Usually, Lilith Sarkisian turns her watercolors drawing into bitmap pictures, that is, images made of dots, just like on any electronic display. It allows her to convey all the nuances of color tones. However, if the image is stretched too much, separate pixels become visible. But for most works, the multitude of colors is much more important than the smoothness of the lines. The colossal importance of color for understanding of the overall picture of Lilith Sarkisian has magically transferred from illustrations to real life. She has been publishing and editing an internet multimedia magazine called Venordar for many years. This name translates from Armenian as the new generation. In 2013, Lilith and photographer Chris Kulakovska came up with the idea of a project called Mixed Up. Photo portraits and stories of people living in Ukraine, but who originate from different countries, ethnicities and cultures are combined together in one project. A year and a half later, it turned into an exhibition featuring celebrity guests. 
65 characters, 55 stories and 60 different ethnicities in their combinations. Ukrainians of various origins had asked to participate in the Mixed Up project, which eventually was included in the national rating of socially important projects, according to the mass media. Unfortunately, the issue we have raised in the Mixed Up project for a year and a half is quite pressing today. Why did I say unfortunately? Well, I would very much like to see the time when it would be pointless to talk about tolerance and equality. This is when these notions become the normal state of affairs. The Mixed Up project helped the future Eurovision 2016 winner singer Jamala tell about her history of the Crimean Tatar people to a wide audience in Ukraine and abroad. She also told about her Armenian roots and about how harmful xenophobia is, especially in the modern world. Probably, if there were no such project now, we would need to create one, especially at this time when it's important for us to be careful, cautious, mindful and tolerant. So if every one of us just looks in the mirror and imagines ourselves as mixed up and sees oneself as a part of the world, you will understand how important care is, knowing who your neighbor is, who your friend is, what they live by and what they eat, then everything will be all right. Well, at least I believe that. Thus, an illustration artist and a photographer together painted the portraits of modern Ukrainians whose power is in their external variety and internal unity, even when roots and traditions are different. And although this time the list didn't use the controversial watercolor and ink, this illustration of hers has been reflected not in fashionable clothing, but in the people who wear such clothing. Thank you. Ты тебе мог на цветочек